say Uncle Doug. Hello. Uh, you know, yeah. there's some things I just don't know one fucking thing about. <laughs> so this might be one of those times we, where I don't have a clever thing we, to say. We don't have any way to lead into this. We have no idea what <laughs> Uncle Dan, Dan is about is, to talk about. Uncle Dan has stumped us What are you talking segment? about? I told you what I'm talking I about. I know, and I have no I gave you the actual this is, thing. This sounds like the worst Transformer ever. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know. I don't know why Dan has decided to talk about the weird sex booth from Woody Allen's Sleeper, but uh, uh, I guess we're going to do that. So, Dan, just why don't you take this shit away? Take it away, right. Uncle Dan. All right. Uh, Jesus, take the wheel. Um, <laughs> I What we're talking about, gentlemen, is mm. uh, is that uh, fixture of the, the Mojave Desert in California. Mm. Yeah. The Integratron. <laughs> I, the Integratron, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how you guys have uh, have managed to live your whole lives missing that. Uh, it's a, it, I, as you will learn, uh, it's a very important piece of our history here in these United States. I know States. nothing it about sounds, it because my memory was erased in the ign- ignorance tron. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a lie detector that would explode if Donald Trump touched it. <laughs> I, well, it might. I, I also might explode if Donald Trump touched me. So who knows? In ecstasy. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and we know what kind of explosion. Dreams really do come true. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Integratron, I, let's, I'll, I'll just start by describing the thing, and then we'll go and do some history, whatever. Imagine, right. if you will, a 38-foot tall uh, dome-shaped building, right. uh, 55 mm. feet in diameter, perfect, you know, round. It's got sort of 16 segments like an orange. It looks like sort of, it's 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 painted white. Is Polly Shore inside? Sometimes, probably. Uh, I'm it's going weird to you ask that because just this minute, yes, he is. Yes, I'm looking at the, as we, the live feed. As we record right now, <laughs> he is in there. Yeah. Uh, it looks kind of like a maybe like like the dome of a of an observatory, uh-huh. like a telescope might come out, but it won't. Um, mm. It's painted white and it's got a <clears throat> ring about twelve feet up. That goes around, uh, that ha- sort of juts out and ha- has all of these things coming out from it, uh, which they will not be able to, I will not be able to explain to you exactly what it is, but we'll be able to talk about it some. Anyway. I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining you trying to dis- give a description of somebody to the police. <laughs> The the round head with the thing sticking it's out. Got a, and a, it's the, got some dead. pokies. What's the, a- the bits that run on the ground and the bits that hold <laughs> coins? All of that. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm glad that I can be of service, and yes. uh, I should probably have podcasts the, with as good at describing things as I am. The visual is complete. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> a white dome. It's a white dome in the middle of the fucking desert. What do you want from me? It's got 16, See? It's got 16 windows uh, going around. Anyway, uh, there it is. Uh, it, was develop- it was built by a man named George Van Tassel. Uh, great, great name. Great name. And I'll give you a little, a little bit of background on George Van Tassel. He, he grew up in the Midwest somewhere and then moved out to Los Angeles, where he worked in the aerospace industry for a mm. little while. Um, oh. But before he did that, he, at first he was working in a garage, and he met a fella, a German fella by the name of Frank Kritzer, um, who was a bit of a loner, a bit of a weirdo, uh, and claimed... To him, to be working a mine somewhere out in the middle of the desert. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So they became friends. Meanwhile, George uh, started work on in uh, the aerospace industry, or mostly just the uh, the airplane industry, mm-hmm. uh, as a mechanic, and then as a as an inspector, and and was a, by all accounts a very smart guy, and and did good with that. And then one day, his buddy, uh, his his buddy Frank, he found out that he blew up. <laughs> uh, Frank so lived their, their Frank their had dream a, of of a cop buddy mo- movie called Kritzner and Van Tassel was dead. Yes, indeed. <laughs> he was two weeks from I retirement. Watch, I would watch get, the shit out of that movie. He was getting too old for this shit. <laughs> uh, so what ended up happening was that uh, Kritzner <clears throat> had excavated out a. A hole in which he lived, um, mm-hmm. a 400 square foot room underneath a very large boulder called Giant Rock. 
which <laughs> aptly named, if you ask Strange me. Strange name. I don't get it, but sure. Um, it, which the rock is still out there. Uh, and yeah. he, he had sort of, he had excavated it using dynamite, which had all gone surprisingly well, apparently. And he just lived there and it was fine. Um, but this was the early 20th century and he had installed also a giant radio antenna on top of giant rock. Oh, Jesus. Leading the authorities to believe that maybe a German guy with long, uh, with, with very large communication, uh, equipment might not be, <laughs> might be nefarious in nature. He so was they, not on the up and up. Yeah. So they decided to raid his little thing and tossed in a canister of uh, tear gas, which apparently ignited the rest of his uh, store of dynamite and (laughs) kablooey. So what do you do when your friend has literally gone to smithereens? You go out. It's hard to uh, pick a condolence card for that. (laughs) Right. That one's tricky. Hallmark 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 forgot. No, they make one. It's just hard to find. Anyway, yeah. uh, literally, uh, he went and lived there. He <laughs> re-excavated the place, moved his wife and children out to the middle of nowhere, uh, and lived there. Uh, where he well, that's, that's that's like in the world according to Garp, where he's looking at a house to buy and a plane crashes into it, <laughs> and he's like, "I'll take it." They're like, "What are you crazy?" He's like, "What are the chances of that happening again?" <laughs> <laughs> Boom! You, I think you figured yeah. it out. Yeah. So, so he, I guess, scraped out uh, the pieces of Frank that were left over and uh, moved in, and that uh, and set up a uh, at least a five square miles from the Bureau of Land Management and set up a little airstrip, where hmm. which he ran as a, as a little airport. Also, not suspicious. No, nothing weird about that at all. He he was an airplane guy. Anyway, oh. while he was out living out there, he just he started to uh, be interested in philosophy and religion, and uh, and began holding meditative uh, little retreats uh. in his four hundred square feet under the giant rock. And people started to come, and they were very interested in all of this. And at some point, uh, in the uh, early night or in the mid to late nineteen fifties, uh, he. I guess it was early 1950s. It was 53. He was uh, meditating under his rock. He Oh, well, he, he was asleep, apparently. This, mm. is all, this is all according to his memoir, I Rode in a Flying Saucer. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he wrote that he awoke one night uh, to find a, a, a fellow standing at the foot of his bed. And beyond that fellow, uh, about 100 yards away, a hovering, glittering, glowing spaceship, quote, mm. seemingly about eight feet off the ground. So his new friend, Solganda, spoke to him in English and <laughs> said, uh, and revealed to him that uh, he's from Venus and was there to uh, help mankind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, took, took him for a quick joyride in said flying saucer or spaceship right. or whatever. And then brought him back and uh, gave him the secrets to cellular rejuvenation. Ah, which would come but, in handy on Venus. Yeah. Wait, no no anal tomfoolery? Just a, just a joyride <laughs> with the top down. You know, you don't say all the things in your memoir. Oh, all right. When, when, yeah, when it's hold, a positive... stuff back. When it's a positive experience, you, 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 you keep some to yourself. I, yeah, I wasn't saying it wasn't positive. I was well, just wondering if, right. how he got got off without it. That's L- all. Listen, Mark, not everybody wants to tell about all of their anal experiences, okay? <laughs> Strap in, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's Mark's other podcast. Anal talk. <laughs> anyway, we, uh, so uh, he, thus began construction on the Integratron, um, which, was, uh, which was basically supposedly there to... To uh, to be a device that would rejuvenate human cells, and uh, and and also it was there for uh, the research into levitation and time travel. That's right, time travel. That's going to happen nice. surely. So there you go. Uh, he basically he decided to incorporate the works of. The uh, works of Moses, Nikola Tesla, and uh, and other 
and George Lakovsky, uh, inventor of, of course, the multiple wave oscillator, as you well know. Sure. <laughs> um, all of which was so. All of this was going to go into the the building of this device uh, that was going to give people basically eternal life because you know biological cells have unique resonant electromagnetic frequencies, and if you resonate them correctly, then they'll get young again, and voila, because all cells are basically like electrical batteries. Uh, well, according to the Matrix. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so well, that's why I that to j- to jiggle my cells properly is why I have one of those things at home that you put the strap around your waist and turn it on and goes. <laughs> I'll live forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I I just got an image that I don't think I'll ever get out of my head. But nope. I'm, I'm not going to describe it. You're welcome. It. Yep. Uh, You're and- welcome. So yes, this. Uh, so he he designed this building to be an electrostatic generator for the purpose of rejuvenation and time travel, uh, mm-hmm. according to him, and began construction, basically funded entirely by donations brought in by people by readers of his pamphlet uh, that he put out. Uh, now he had this other thing going for him, which was that he started in the 50s to host uh, the giant in, rock, the giant rock interplanetary spacecraft convention. Huh. <laughs> uh, this guy had a gift for naming things. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, which he hosted for more than 20 years. Now, hmm. you may know, and we there's a lot of stuff that, that we're going to have to get back to. There's a lot of stuff in, with the, in the research for this that I want yeah. to go back and uh-huh. cover. Um, yeah. But... Uncle Mark, not unlike yourself, there's an intersection here with uh, certain other groups. Basically, after Roswell, uh, the the Roswell, New Mexico sort of sp- in space landing alien encounter uh, rumors yeah, came uh-huh. about, a yeah. lot of people started talking about how they had been contacted sure. by aliens. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so and so. Uh, our George rose to fame as one of the leading contactees slash ufologists, which makes mm-hmm. that phrase makes me want to shoot myself in the face. Uh, <laughs> anyway, he started this convention, uh, which drew in at its peak in the late fifties, ten thousand people. Oh my god! People what? were very interested in wow. UFOs. In, I mean. So, there's a lot of speculation about this being a thing where you know this was also the time when the atomic bomb was starting to yeah. w- was 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 starting to be a real danger, and there were new aircraft being invented and and rockets being invented every day, and people were afraid of being attacked from above for the yeah. first time in their lives, or in mm. the world other than lightning. Yeah. So this alien thing really captured the imagination. Of people the world over. We've talked about other alien cults, and LRH uh, basically is sort of the most famous of all of the alien cultist uh, leaders. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this guy, he's, he had this very popular uh, convention. He had all of these people who believed in him, and so it wasn't diff- that difficult for him to raise the money to build this Integratron. Uh, he, even Howard <laughs> Hughes, apparently, w- was a major contributor. <laughs> And he wasn't crazy at all. No, he was. He had a good head on his shoulders. That guy. <clears throat> he sure did. And tissue boxes on his feet. Right. <laughs> uh, no word as to whose head that was on his shoulders. Anyway, yep. <laughs> um, so so he built this dome. Uh, he did it using entirely with using no uh, magnetic material at all. He did it all with wood and joinery, rather than uh, no not no nails, oh, no, no screws, no, no metal. metal. Uh, yeah. non-ferrous everything. So Magneto can't attack? Is that the reasoning behind that? Well, uh, no. Probably. Excuse much. <laughs> it was because it was built exactly, and it, you know, if you test this, you'll find that it's true. It is 100% exactly perfectly placed on a electromagnetic vortex. Uh. Uh, that is mm. not a real thing, <laughs> but uh, people claim that all the time. Eventually, we're going to have to get to Sedona, Arizona, and the vortexes. Not vortices. Don't, the vortices, don't, Dan. No, no. Vortices. In, in, not in Sedona. They're vortexes. And uh, ah. 
Basically, this is a thing that you can't test for with any actual instruments. It's just a thing that you you know because you feel good when you're there. All my exes live in Vortexes. <laughs> that, Doug gives away his Bond villain uh, <laughs> horrible turpitude. Yeah. Why, is it, why aren't there Vortexes in Texas? I don't know. That maybe it I, just sounds too stupid. Good question. We'll get to the bottom of that another time. We won't. Uh, so <laughs> there is. So there it is. He he built this thing, and r- about two weeks before it was set to uh, to really open and and get running, our boy Van Tassel died. Oh, the jiggling didn't mm. work. The jig. Well, it, he never got it fired up. Oh, apparently. Oh boy. Uh, and there's no word on how it was really supposed to work because. Fairly instantly after he died, all of his notes and everything kind of just up and disappeared. But I, I've pulled this up online, mm. and it's just a building. Yeah, like it's not. There's no moving parts or anything, are there? Well, I, there's that the part that I described so well that Mark can now envision <laughs> perfectly in his head without any uh, visual aids. That I think was meant to spin around, maybe <clears throat> around the exterior of it. It just looks like uh, a like a, a an observatory. It's just a, right. You remember when yeah. I, Mark, do you remember earlier in the segment when I said it looks like an observatory? Do you remember that part? Well, that's, I've, I just, I just, it's, I'm the one who describes it. I think it looks, like a, it looks like a Darlac helmet. <laughs> there you go. It does. It's a bit of a pith helmet looking thing, yeah. Anywho, uh, so after his death, it went through a few different incarnations. Various people owned it. And by the way, if you ever want a treat, go to the website of the Integratron and read their timeline because they present it in reverse order, and it it reads like it's like reading uh, a version of the show Memento. You just keep <laughs> getting new pieces, and you're like, "Wait, what?" So if you knew nothing <laughs> about it, and you started reading that in the order in which it's presented, it just keeps it just keeps springing stuff on you, and it's quite delightful. Um, I I see they offer sound baths. That's neat. Well, that's the new thing. So that's that's yeah. where they're that's that's sort of the thing. Uh, it was supposed to be this one kind of woo, and the guy died before he was able to get that rolling. So it's been yeah. various other types of woo since then, and now it's owned by three uh, lovely looking ladies, uh, all sisters, who uh, who offer sound ba- bathing. You apparently go in there, you lie down on a mat. And they play crystal bowls at you. The acoustics are, I assume, uh, the, well, they claim perfect, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. Right. But it just means that it's a very live acoustic environment and the sound. It's a dome. Yeah. It's an unusual sound space. I'm yeah. looking at these three ladies right now and I'm going to guess they're not fans of our show. No, no. This, these, are, these are California hippie ladies, I would yeah. guess. Uh, very, very into whatever woo you can possibly present to them. Right. Uh, they, they can't hear the podcast over those noisy fucking bowls. Well, that's true. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I am assured that it is a relaxing experience to go and lie down in a dome and hear bowls. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, but nowhere near as cool as the regeneration of your cells and time travel that we could have had if only our one conduit to the people of venus hadn't died yep. before its completion yep and if he if he could have regenerated cells maybe he could have put his friend back together <laughs> right got blowed up maybe he could but have he, maybe that's why maybe he kept him in in, uh, in various boxes and was going to it was a labor of love uh, going to piece him back together again but well, thanks for we'll explaining never know. what that crazy shit is. Yes, indeed. Uh, I Next time I go out there, I intend... To, apparently, you have to book well in advance, which is why when I was n- very near it, I didn't actually go to there because I wasn't able to... Uh, I wouldn't have been able to get in. Yeah. Oh, pity. Oh, what a pity. Maybe so, next time, I'll, next time. I'll, I'll drop 30 bucks and, and get a sound bath. Any Any kind <laughs> of bath is better than nothing, so... Exactly. We'll see. All right. Well, lovely. Let's uh, let's move on. Okay. All right. 